Now bringing in on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, who, as just mentioned, will call the Boise State BYU basketball game tonight. Greg, welcome to the show. How are you? Doing well, and let's start with a moment of silence for Taco Bell Arena, shall we? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, that was great. That's right. fantastic. That was great. That was great. <laughs> Always loved the gordita. Uh, Greg, I, I would like for you to explain to people your travel schedule and broadcast responsibilities over the next week and a half or so because it's downright bonkers, and you are a very hardworking man. Well, you know, not to take any thunder away from, from Christmas, but this is the most wonderful time of the year because <laughs> we have all the sports going at once here. And so, uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do basketball in Boise tonight. Um, we'll travel back tomorrow, uh, do soccer, uh, uh, BYU against Louisville tomorrow night. Then I'll go home and unpack and repack for 10 days <laughs> and, and then uh, fly to Boston Friday morning, drive Boston to Amherst Friday night, do the game in Amherst Saturday, fly or drive back to Boston after the game Saturday, fly from Boston to LA and then LA to Maui Sunday, do the games in Maui Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then red eye Thursday <laughs> either to either LA and then San Diego or LA and then maybe Stanford or LA and maybe <laughs> Salt Lake and Provo for what's next for BYU women's soccer if they keep on winning. And then we'll finish it all off with that game at San Diego State uh, a week from this Saturday for football. Do you know off the top of your head the amount of frequent flyer miles that you would be able to cash in just based off of the next week and a half? Well, I, I do know this. After this next week and a half, uh, I, I, should, I, should, man, I should retain my status for next year. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one would certainly hope so. That is crazy, yeah. man. And uh, we're just getting things started in Boise tonight. So let's start with BYU basketball. What do you expect the BYU basketball team to show up like after such an emotional, hard-fought win, a quad one win at Houston? Well, man, what a what, what, what a shot in the arm, right? What a what a what a uh, uh, just a, just a, an affirmation that you know some of the things they're working on are coming to fruition. Because and, and not that it would have been the worst thing in the world, you know, to come out of that game uh, with an L and be two and two through four games. But and and this may be uh, you know maybe not the most important thing in the world, but I I, I noticed that you know they they they've had. They had a, a nine-point lead against San Diego State, and it slipped away, and they lost the game. They had a 10-point lead against Southern Utah, and it slipped away, and they trailed in the second half. They had a 14-point lead against Houston, and it slipped away, and they trailed. And, and, and you just don't want to be that, that, that team that, that maybe has that, you know, gets used to the pattern of we're up, but, and then things kind of slip away. And, and if you lose too many of those kind of games where it happens too frequently, uh, it, it can maybe, um, you know, work on you in a negative way. And, and so I thought it was important that BYU recover – from losing a lead that they had all game, right, and then and then getting it back and winning it the way they did, and and uh, I think if you were to ask anybody um, about how three and one through four games without Yoldi would look, everybody would have said that's fantastic, and that's where BYU is right now. I think when you said shot in the arm, I, I think that's spot on. I think that's exactly what a win like that does, which then kind of surprised me a little bit when you look at the game tonight. Uh, according to Ken Palmer, BYU, now granted, you're favorite on the road, which is always a good thing, but BYU is only a two-point favorite against the Broncos tonight. I, I was a little surprised by that. What, do you think that's fair? Well, actually, yeah. I, I mean, you can find other projections that have BYU probably in the mid-40s in a percentage to win tonight. Uh, Boise's underperformed, I, I think, to one and two. They've only played three games. A lot of teams have played more. Um, but, uh, you know, Boise is, uh, you know, is, is minus eight tonight. Um, I beg your pardon, but uh, Boise is, uh, again, uh, depending on the different projections, uh, you know, maybe even a small favorite tonight. Um, they're, they're one and two and, and just haven't shot it really well the last couple of games. When you go on the road to be actually projected to win, I think is, uh, is, is saying something. And, and BYU is, according to Ken Pomeroy, of course. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think Boise is better than they've shown right now. And, and so I think a win tonight would be a, a really a nice win for BYU. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell, with us on BYU Sports Nation. In your preparation, Greg, as you've zoned in on some statistics, what's the key stat tonight for BYU to beat a Broncos team that has dropped two straight games? Well, here's, here, here's what's not going to be the key stat, rebounding. <laughs> um, because, because BYU's been out-rebounded in every game when they're 3-1. and one. Um, This may just be that kind of year where BYU's going to really struggle to, to hold its own on the boards, at least until Yoli gets back. And so I'm not going to say rebounding because they found a way to get past that. But it really looks like it's the three-point line right now. Boise, 
uh, has has seen their Division One opponent shoot 50% in these last two games. Uh, BYU shooting near 40 after being around 33 from the shorter line last year. And so uh, the way teams are shooting it right now against Boise and the way that BYU has been shooting it, I think it's not a bad place to look uh, you know, for, for a difference maker tonight. Boise, I think, what, 10 for the last 44 uh, from the arc and losing these back-to-back games. Yikes. Who's been the most pleasant surprise, in your opinion, for this basketball team? Well, you know, those who saw, you know, Alex Barcelo play, um, you know, in, in, in the preseason and the summer leading up to the season would say that this is not surprising. But because BYU fans hadn't seen him, it's t- tough to not say Alex. Um, he's been a real revelation at the guard line. And, and uh, we already knew what Jake Toulson can do, and he comes as a whack player of the year. So what Jake is doing is, is, uh, is, is you know, almost as expected. But Alex Barcelo, because of the novelty, I think has to be, uh, has to be that guy. But I will, you know, quickly throw in um, the fact that, you know, Dalton Nixon shot the ball so well from, from deep is a pleasant surprise because he really struggled with that shot last year. Just his overall game looks so much better. And then uh, because Colby Lee didn't play a lot last year, and when he did, then he didn't do a lot last year. At least in the free throw line, he, he struggled. He actually, you know, scored scored pretty well when he was actually on the floor, but he was on the floor a lot. So, the way Colby Lee has played um, ha- has been nice. And I will say, you know, the 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 Houston Colby Lee is maybe you know the surprising guy or the pleasant surprise. The Southern Utah Colby Lee is the guy that needs to you know work a little bit more on, on a few things. And so we've seen you know both Colby Lees so far this year. And, 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 and more of Houston, the better. And I think BYU will be in great shape, at least until Yoli gets back. And that's a real positive thing, too. I think maybe the, uh, you know, the, the, the side effect of Yoli being out is that a guy like Colby Lee gets, you know, and Dalton Nixon, for that matter, gets really valuable minutes that may or may not be there in the same total once Yoli gets back and the rotations change around a little bit. But, man, I think BYU becomes a better and a deeper team because they've had to work without Yoli, and I think Colby's one of the main beneficiaries. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation. Four games down, five to go in this nine-game Yoli Child suspension. What's a fair expectation for the Cougars in the final five, knowing that they have Boise State tonight, UCLA, and then either Kansas or Chaminade coming up in the next three? Well, I, I think it's fair to at this point expect BYU to, to get to Yoli Child with a winning record. And, and that's, I, I, I would think, a, uh, if you said again, you know, can BYU get to you know, at least five, if not six, you know, wins or maybe seven without Yoli Child. But, you know, how, how would that be? And that'd be great, I think. So I, I think BYU is all but assured of getting back to Yoli Child with a winning, rec- winning record. And, you know, they're 3-1 and one right now. Uh, a win over Boise would, you know, be massive toward that, of course. They've got a non-D1 game in there before Yoli gets back. So if they win tonight, you're looking at essentially at least five, and then you, you know, throw Maui in and see what you can get. So, uh, yeah, I, I think a winning record without Yoli Child, take it and run. I wanted to ask you a football question, Greg, uh, before we let you go. The, the BYU Cougars, as you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, are going to play at Amherst against UMass. Uh, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Uh, the Minutemen are not a very good football team defensively. Uh, they're giving up a ton of yards, a ton of points. So with that said, how, how will you gauge success for BYU football this week against a team that is struggling as mightily as UMass is? Well, I, I, I'd want to, uh, you know, beat the average points allowed uh, that UMass is, is uh, at right now. It's what, 52.4, I think. So, mm-hmm. so be somewhere in the 50s and, and, and maybe not allow more than a couple of scores uh, to UMass. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, BYU does go to San Diego State the next week. And, uh, you know, the Aztecs, in stark contrast to UMass, are, you know, one of the best scoring defenses in the country. But, you know, UMass has on occasion put up a few points. They actually score more points per game than San Diego State does. So San Diego State needs its great defense because the offense is so lackluster. And nothing UMass can do on offense will ever camouflage what's happening defensively. I mean, they're just so far and away uh, the most porous and generous defensive team in college football this year. So, yeah, get into the 50s and and, and keep that number under 10 or in the low teens and, uh, and then move on to next week. Greg Rubel traveling to the edge of the world and back <laughs> over the next 10 days. It starts in Boise tonight. Wish you a great call tonight, Greg. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Good to be with you. Have a great day. You got it. Greg Rubel on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.